So I'm out here giving the golf fairer just a little bit of pinpoint watering. We're going to be working on the window box. We're also going to be planting up some gorgeous amaryllis. And when you see how they look, you are going to be just in awe of their beauty. I want to head over to the window box and finish that. So we're going to be adding some beautiful winter berries, Gothera. And if you've never used Gothera in your winter plantings, if you've never used Gothera in your indoor plantings, you are missing out. So let's get these babies in place. Take the watering can with us. I'm extra, so I'm going to be tweaking this box to fit my specification. You are using living plants to get you through from one season to the next when you have fluctuating temperatures. The most important thing is going to be the root ball. You're going to want to make sure that you keep the root ball nice and warm. So it's a few different ways you can do that. You can use lighting. Yes. Uh-huh. Did you hear what I said? Let me say it again. You can use lighting. You can use the lights and they will give just enough heat in order to heat up your soil here and keep the temperature just where they need it to be. Now, if the forecast is calling for temperatures that are down in the negatives, baby, you might as well kiss it goodbye. We're going to start by pulling out our Spanish moss. So I'm just going in by the tons and I'm just pulling it out. Let me get some gloves on here. So we're going to come in, pull it out where I have it placed at, but don't toss it. Now, what I like to do is I will clean this and I will reuse it. I will let it dry out so it doesn't harbor mold or any type of fungus and I'll reuse it. In there to see how this could potentially look. So you see how when we put that in there, you see how it just elevates that look a little bit. Get in, let's get in close and look at this. Actually, let's finish placing, then we'll get in and we'll look at it. So here's another one. And then maybe let's tuck one here on the side, okay? Get these all popped in and then we'll talk about all of the components in here. Well, this one right here on the end just needs to come closer. So we'll just pop this out. Real simple fix. We'll go down in the soil and just move it over closer. come in clip and open this up as well and then you just place it back here you see how that just really brings everything in and actually we'll take this out So now we're going to fill in this gap right here. Do you see how this evergreen piece right here, when you hold it this way, it sticks up that way. When you hold it this way, it creates that drape. So in order to fill this side out over here, what we're going to do is I'm going to give this a cut. Now with your winter greens, remember everything gets a fresh cut. Okay. And we'll just stick it, but stick it back. You see how that Fill that spot out just nicely. Just like this. Unless you're doing like a big, huge container, take your pieces and just cut them to give you the look and the effect that you need. So we're just going to come in 
and just drape this out, tuck. We come in and we water. When you're putting your winter greens out, make sure it's not coming across even like a blunt cut. Come in and play with the height a little bit. Come in and play with the texture a little bit. It's a lot of texture going on here. Look at that. How beautiful and gorgeous is that? Let me get the spray nozzle just right. Okay. So I'm coming in and just spritzing my winter greens only. I totally love the look and the contrast of this box. It is screaming. It is screaming holidays, okay? Our Monrovia boxwoods. Then you drop down to the next section and you have your silver fur. Then you have an alternating pattern of the cyclamen and then you have the Gothera. Complement the rest of what's going on. It's gonna definitely be an ambiance. It's definitely gonna be a vibe. I have some beautiful amaryllis bulbs that are absolutely gorgeous. I have a few of them that's in bloom. Let's, let's go check on this Lysianthus. It, to see if we have any action going on. You guys, we have Lysianthus. Yes, that is yes. Every last one of these are open and they are even more prettier than I remember them last year. This is only one flower. This section right here on the flower, it's starting to open, but it's not fully open. And there's a bud up underneath here that's not fully open. Because they are so huge, it would be absolutely beautiful and amazing to just put them in one arrangement but I don't think I want to go that route. I really feel like I want them to stand out individually. And I want it to be to where when they're planted up, you can see these beauties from every single angle. You guys, look at this. Look at how just big this is. Just the three of these together. It's like one just gorgeous bouquet. The containers. What containers are we using? If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I have a thing for containers. And I think you guys are gonna like the containers that we're gonna be planting these up in. They're simple, but very elegant. So let's move these aside so we can get some containers on the table. The size of bulb does matter when it comes to your show, the performance that you're going to get out of your amaryllis bulb. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop these babies into these beautiful urns. And I can't wait for you to see the final look on these. So let's get started. thing I need to do is I want to come in with some moss. Now I like to use the super moss here. This is what the bag looks like. And it's just preserved sheet moss. And the brand is super moss. Absolutely love to use them. Sometimes I'll put the moss on my containers when the moss is dry. I just kind of feel like when you have it wet, sometimes it just shapes better. But it's nothing wrong with you putting it on there in a dry form, because I do both, I do both. And when I put my moss in, I kind of like for both sides to kind of shine through a little bit. So let's do this one. Sometimes I'll even roll it a bit. If you want to keep your amaryllis bloom 
blooming longer. You want to maintain that bloom. You want to make sure that you hydrate your amaryllis. So you're just going to go in. You're going to add a little bit of water around here. And that way your bloom is going to last longer and help everything thrive. And on this one right here, we're not fully budded out all the way. Can you guys see that? This is a whole different bloom stock right here. So all of this right here is on just one stock. And with your colossal bulbs, you might get three, four, maybe five stems out of your colossal amaryllis. What you want to do is you want to make sure you continue to make sure you nourish the bulb and that way you can get the best performance out of it. Now we got this project knocked out. So you guys, do you remember when we started those Lizzie seeds? Let's go pop our head in and see what they're looking like. Now I was only able to visualize like so many blocks in, but hopefully everything has germinated. I know y'all wondering why I'm just up in this thing like this. Baby, let me tell you something. Lysianthus, when they come out from germination, they are the smallest seedlings ever. And they stay small for quite some time. They stay so small. So that's why I'm like in here just zeroed in, trying to see like what's the 411. I'm trying to find out because baby, you, you know, and, and let me tell you something. Lysianthus, I almost have a hundred percent success rate with my Lysianthus. There has never been a batch that I've put down to see that I've never got any results from. And I used to bring in tons of Lysianthus plugs because you know, you just hear so much hype around Lysianthus is so hard to grow, da da da. But let me tell you something. When you get something down packed, when you get it down packed, when you get, get it just right, the growing conditions, you can do it in your sleep. So I want y'all to get in here. And you guys see them? And some of them may look as though it's nothing in there, but there is. We just got to go a little bit slower. Can you see what I'm talking about? So like, for example, this one right here, it looks like it's not even anything in there. Hold on. But it is. There we go. So as we continue to look, you can see here's our next row here. You can see our success rate is absolutely good. It's perfect. At this stage with the Lysianthus, they now come off the heat mat because it's very important to keep the Lysianthus at a certain temperature to prevent rosetting. But we'll set this to the side. I just wanted to make sure I'm keeping you guys in the loop. I wanted to give you all an update on the Lysianthus seeds. I also wanted to give you all an update on the amaryllis bulbs because the last time we checked in on the amaryllis bulbs, they were not in bloom. And also, let me give you one more update really, really quick. All right, so do you guys remember our bag 
that we had, right? Remember, we took this amaryllis bulb right here. Then from there, we gave it the paper bag treatment. And here we are right here, my friends. Can you guys see that? We're already butted up. We already have a stem. How, how fast was that? That was absolutely quick. So if you guys have not been following along with our amaryllis, I am letting you guys know about some of the techniques that I'm using to force my amaryllis bulbs a lot quicker. It's been in development for about two years where I really started to try to hone in and test this out, test that out. If this doesn't work, then how can we replace this with something different? So drop down in the comment box. I wanna know what are you guys doing in your plant rooms? What are you guys doing outside in your gardens? All right, now, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we started talking about this project right here, we did what we had to do with this bulb, but then I said that this bulb was probably full of a bunch of babies if we opened it up. Now, right here on the outside of this bulb, can you guys see this? One, two, three additional bulbs, one bulging out here on the side and the bulb, like you literally can press this bulb. See? It's either one up underneath here. So no good can come from this. It's everything has dried out. It's an unhealthy bulb. Did you see how when I opened it up, the middle of the bulb was just kind of like just dried out. So when you're getting your bulbs, you, you want to make sure you're getting quality bulbs. So now we need a little saucer. All right, so now we are gonna go ahead and water this bulb. back on the rack. 